じゃあ10回戦ねルールを守ってあの反則ない試合をしてください10ラウンドボクシング What's my message? And I hope you are clean fight. Okay. I love the referee. And I, ho I hope you <laughs> so polite. Mess, and I hope you have a clean fight. <laughs> <laughs> so welcoming. I love it. <laughs> All right. This one scheduled for 10 rounds in the junior featherweight division. Takuma Inoue in the white trunks with red trim. Jake Bornea in the black trunks with gold trim. Both orthodox fighters, both, as you saw on the teletape, right around the same height, same reach. Neither one really had an advantage there. The biggest advantage really coming in the knockout percentage, more so for Bornea than Inoue, who has a 50% KO percentage, just three knockouts and the 16 wins for Inoue. But already Inoue's coming out, working that jab. The fill out round, that's what we call the first round, uses is the fill out process, but oh, nice counter. He counter felt that, absolutely. Nice oh, one, right two. Hand, right hand to that body. Takuma in a way looking to establish that lead left hand jab has thrown it down low and up high so far. He's got he's reached his mark with it as well. Bornea holding up that high guard anytime in a way throws. Ooh. Nice short hook there. And if you look also, in a way is you can already he's kind of setting them traps. What I mean by that is he'll throw the jab. But he'll take a half step back, hoping that you know Bernier will bite, and that he can he can he can react off that with maybe a counter of his own. Nice left hook to the body. That's a punch that Naoya in a way loves. Again. And again, back to the body up top, then finishing downstairs with the left hook. No question that in the Ohashi gym, they are working on those hooks all day long as he throws another yeah, couple there. Let his hands go. Oh, came, he got, he got lazy coming out, got caught, got caught with a left hook. If you're on the East Coast and just waking up at two something in the morning and you're seeing Inoue on your screen, that's not Naoya Inoue yet. And most people that have been yeah. waking up to watch this know Already? <laughs> this is the first bout of the night. Just a reminder, this is his younger brother, Takuma Inoue, taking on Jake Bornea. Our main event later tonight, Naoya Inoue taking on Paul Butler. That left hook is finding his mark to the body. There it is on once top, again, right on cue, Jamel. Yeah, he'll bring it down and he'll turn it. He'll he'll just he'll make an adjustment as he comes back up with him into an up to a um a sharp left uppercut as well. So we'll look out for that. So a solid start here in round one for Takuma Inoue as Bornea gets in a left hook of his own <laughs> at the end of that first round, but really quiet there so far in, in the arena as well. I mean, that's how they normally are, though, out there. I'm like, let's get, let's make some noise. There we go. That, that left hook, like you pointed out, that left hook has been has found his mark already in the first round, and yes, we caught him again coming out. That did, left hook made some noise in round one. He's filler, is a filler, boom. A range finder, and he, and he goes down to the body and brings him right back up with a left uppercut. And there's a look at Inoue's corner. Shingo Inoue, his father, in the corner, also trains his brother and will be back in the corner for our main event later tonight. And Dexter, Cataluna, and Art Monis in the corner of Bornea tonight. Again, looks like a really big ring there, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> like, I don't know if it's more of the black mat or not, but we're not no, that's their a big, ringside. But or, I mean, these guys are like 5'4 as well, but I think it's, it's a big ring. <laughs> yeah, I think that the biggest guy we have on the card tonight is 140 pounds, but nonetheless, lots of room to work there, and that is not good news if you are not uh, a fighter that 
likes to stay in the center. Yeah, of if the you're ring. a brawler, this isn't your ring. This is <laughs> exactly. definitely isn't your ring if you're if you're a brawler. In a nice way, counter. Doing Slips. good work with that yes. left hand again. I love that left hand to the body, then bringing it back in between as an uppercut. There he throws it to start the combination. And I love how it's more than one shot. You know, he, he throw he throw twos and threes at times. Especially when, when he count when he, when he counts up something, he'll he'll throw he'll throw a flurry of punches, and and they, for the most part, they're all hitting the mark. Bornea looking to get some sort of rhythm established. He's really hasn't been first much so far. He ended the first round with a nice left hook, but has really ha had not been able to put together very many combinations here in the beginning of the fight. And like you just said, he, he's, he's really have done nothing much, but well, he got a good um, right hand yeah, in there. what happens when he did throw, and he landed the left hook, and there's a right hook as well. Yeah, exactly, I just want to point it out. He has, he has to, you know, start being first at times, and you know, he has to create his own openings. He can't just sit back waiting for a counter himself. He, sometimes you have to um, make your opponent bite in order, in order for you to, you know, to really start maybe you know, some, get looking for the looking for those openings and counters yourself. But you got to be first. You got to start working. You can't just sit back and wait. That right hand just missed the mark from in the way. But then he goes back to the body. He stay. He stays in the pocket. Right there again. Left hook. Strong jab there from in away. There. Yeah, one, two. <laughs> he hit him, but then it's going to one, two. Oh, there again with the left hook to the body. And you can tell those left hooks are taking the um, effect. And the reason why I say it is because when you see that opponent's arms come tight, tightly close to the body more, that means those, those body shots are taking effect. Nice jab. That jab is strong. Listen, everyone who's watching, don't be fooled by the three the three knockouts on anyway's record. You know, he may not be a, a big punch like his brother, but I can guarantee these shots hurt. Everything he's throwing has bad intention on him. Especially when they're getting hit to the body as Bornea actually gets in a right hook there to the body. It was always at the end of the round. Yeah, it's <laughs> like he hears that 10 second mark and then shoots a shot. Better round for Bornea there, but still in a way getting off first and more efficiently than Bornea for the first two rounds. Absolutely. Love the beautiful costume for the ring card girls, the headdress. I wonder if we could get the top ring knockouts to wear that uniform. <laughs> <laughs> the boots and all. <laughs> A little 360 cam action right now. Wow. Seen it from all angles. That was pretty cool. No. I was not expecting that. No. Round three, this one scheduled for 10 rounds. The Super Bantamweight Division. Christina Poncher and Jamel Herring here with you. And briefly, Bernea turned southpaw oh, I was here. just pointing that out. He's turning. He, he probably figured out that the first two rounds, he got he to gotta try something different. So let's see what he does here. And usually, Jamel, when guys turn southpaw or turn to the opposite stance, then they usually fight something lacks. They give up something. There's very few fighters that are seamless that can make that transition between orthodox and southpaw and do everything well from both sides. So very interesting to see how this changes things for Bernea. I mean, he caught, he, he caught in a way with a good, with a good check hook, but then, um, you know, in a way, fire it back with a, with a two, three punch combination. But again, you're right. You, uh, in some, at some points, Usually, when, when the fighters switch, they trying to they trying to throw their opponent off. But at times, there are at times when when a, um, a, a fighter switches his stance because he's running out of ideas from his normal um, stance a, as a conventional fighter, orthodox fighter. I mean, in my opinion, when it comes to switch hitters in the game right now, as he looks to try to get off that lead right hand, maybe putting that. Strong hand for him up front as he does land a good left to the body there, does Borneo, and it in a way answers right back. 
But I was going to say the, the most seamless switch hitter in the game, in my opinion, is Terrence Crawford. All right, clear. Nobody, no, nobody does it better. I mean, maybe you'd even say yeah, now he fights more southpaw than he does orthodox, but nonetheless, just seamlessly. I mean, either way, he's he's a, mon a monster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Pun intended for this card. And a, another one, another up and coming that, that I like, who's um who's a good switch hitter, is actually um Jerron Boost Ennis as well. Oh, let's he, talk about yeah, that. He, he's actually yeah. Let's he's actually a good switch hitter from what I've seen so far as well. Yeah. Ooh, oh, nice counter. nice counter with the right hand from Inouye. Sat on that one. Again, nice, a nice counter, and, and, and he's countering well because Bernaya, he, he's he's overreaching, and when he reaches, his head drops. See, that's why Inouye was expecting it, and he tried to throw for um, uppercut because he expects Inouye to overthrow and, and bring his head down along with his punch. Well, the one thing that I, I do see that made a bit of a difference, and that's a good body work there by Borneo, too, is now that he has switched to southpaw, it has negated the jab of Inouye right, yeah. a little bit more. And that's often what happens with the orthodox and a southpaw fighter, where there's, those lead hands meet. But I'm not saying that necessarily won him that round, but it but did it, make it's that adjust, weapon. Yeah, it's, it's a little adjustment to make a big difference at times over time also as well. Sure. There we go. Oh, that's the counter. Nice counter. He sat on that. He sat on that right hand. Bam. He came down on it. He brought, he brought the force down on that punch so that, you know, that hurt. Round four. Then he comes and back out. Yeah, I was, yeah, I just, I just put that Are you taking back my out. lines, Jamal? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we've seen the same thing. I'm like, he's coming out. So. <laughs> well, let me see if he's going to switch back. Okay. Well, I think he likes a little bit more of what he saw in round three from the southpaw stance. Obviously sticking with it as he looks oh. to dig to the body, something that Inouye did extremely effectively in round one. Right, and I think you were, you were, you were spot on, though, when you said um, it kind of ne negated Inouye's jab because that jab was, you know, was, was hitting him countless times in the first two, in the first two rounds, and this is a strong jab. So right now is what he needs to be. He needs to be backing up Inouye because when Inouye marches forward, you know, he gets real aggressive, and he sits on his punches, as you see right there. Nice body, the left hook to the body again. That punch has been there early and often. Right. Nice, nice straight right hand, too, from Inouye. Yeah, he's right on the mark. Guard. Again. And um, Brene, he's, he's, he's not moving up her body, so he's right there. He, he, no matter what, he's going to be right there lined up because he's not moving side to side, up, you know, up and down. He just, he just, he just standing up straight forward. Nice counter hook, left hook from Inouye. Coming over, coming over the shoulder of a, late, um, of a lazy jab. He's keeping the hand down. Pernay gets some sneaky body shots in there, but Inouye's come from a little right bit farther back. distance, and he gets them right back. They kind of stand out a little bit more. Something that you got to think about when you're when you're thinking about how the judges are looking at some of these shots. He's not he's not giving oh. Bernaya the chance to take over. Every time every time you know Bernaya comes with a combination or something, he he immediately fires back with his own with his own um, shot selection, and his is usually the more harder and telling shots for the like for the referees I mean for the judges to see agreed like I said again Bernardo goes he goes back to a lot of just sitting back and thinking and waiting that's what he doesn't need to be doing 
and he now went back and to the rope. orthodox stance. Hey, hey. So for now has abandoned the southpaw position towards the end of round four. Fought all of round three as a southpaw and majority of round four as Inoue now looks to come forward at the bell, something that Bornea has done the end of the last couple of rounds. So you see a little swelling on Bornea's face as well. And it was interesting in the corner too, when they were working on the swelling, he was just pressing with the finger. He wasn't he some, you know they put some some cold on it. They put some cold on it. There's a beautiful right, yeah. lead uppercut. And he blocked that right hand, but in a way, yeah, uppercut. he's trying to get them, bring those hands down to work the body. One, two, beautiful one, two. And again, that comes from no upper body movement. Just sitting there in the same spot, taking the shots. Round five. Round five scheduled for ten in the first of our four bout card coming to you from Tokyo, Japan. Christina Ponter and Jamel Herring with you and I'd argue to say a shutout for Inoue through the first four rounds. It's a shutout. Great. It's a shutout. I mean, Bernal, he he's had his spots, but you know, in a way, honestly, what I like from him, he's actually kept the same pace throughout the whole fight so far, and you know, and he's a worker. He doesn't take his foot off the he doesn't take his foot off the, off the, um, the gas, but at the same time, he he doesn't um, he doesn't smother his shots and overcommits. You know, he 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 keeps keeps good distancing and. You know, again, he puts punches in bunches. Yeah, I like how he initiates combinations with different punches as well. I mean, obviously a ton starting off the jab, which is the most basic and essential punch, but he'll sometimes start with the left hook. Right, yeah, he'll yeah, yeah. The body then finish up top. Because he'll, he'll throw it He'll throw it in terms of the form as a, as a, um, a jab, but he'll, at the last minute, he'll turn it right, he'll turn it over, and he'll go like, like, like that, yeah, see? He'll <laughs> turn you. it over. <laughs> or he'll that. even go down to the body as well with this also. Double, double left hook. Jamel, what do you Dead think Bornea can do at this point to start to win himself some of these rounds? That he has, he has to, um, he has to basically keep in a way occupied. You gotta, you, you gotta give him something to think about before, and, and you know, make him second guess about throwing at you first. So you gotta stay busy, and you gotta be offensive, and not, on, but not just that, but you gotta go from offense defense. Sometimes he'll, he'll go, to, he'll go offense, but then he'll, he'll admire his work, and then he'll get caught with shots like that. So that one right down the middle. For Inouye. Bornea just back and forth between his stances now, once again, as an orth, uh, excuse me, southpaw. And I believe it's because he, he's running out of ideas. Sure. Oh, oh, down that body, body yeah, that body work. There from Inouye. He got bad intentions now. That right hand, too, as well. The straight right hand. Finishes again with the left hook to the body, and there it is once again. Again, Bernan needs to stop being first. You know, he he waits and he'll wait, but by then it's too late. Um, in a while he'll, he'll he'll get his combinations off and he'll get right back to defense or he'll take a step back where he's not in range. Ooh, nice. Nice right hand from Inouye. Nice right cross and then finishes the combination again. True to form, down to the body with the left hook. And you're just wondering too, like, these shots seem to be coming hard oh, from shots Inouye, hurt. but Bernia <laughs> taking them so well, you're like, what does he need to do? Sit down a little bit more on these punches, generate a little bit more power? Or, you know, Bornea just showing, you know, these are body shots. <laughs> body shots. Time and time again. I'm not talking. What's there's that some that fighters that can take headshots all day. But that left hook to the body from round one it's has been, been on, the on par. And there's yeah, the he goes with his, his own body attack himself. But, you know, in a way, it's kind of catching him on the elbows. He tried to throw, push him off. Caught him, caught him on, the, you know, on, on the elbows again. That's just great defense from in a way. 
here he comes his own offense. You know, he gets caught right here in the chest, but boom, he throws he throws a right hand back, right on the eye, and you see you see where the blood is coming from. It's great, great Long. technical action. Great technical action from Inouye so far. Love to see it. Round six, halfway through the scheduled 10 round super bantamweight contest. Takuma Inouye has been effective, efficient, particularly early with the jab and investing in the body with that left hook right there on the money once again. Yeah, that right hand. has had some moments, has had some decent body work as well, but he just hasn't been able to match the output of Inouye. I think he's only backed up Inouye maybe one. Oh, nice, nice right hand from Inouye. Yeah, it's but been again, that right popping. hand find his mark as well. I mean, look at the look at the swelling on on Bernier's face just from the right hand of Inouye alone. And that right there takes takes it out of you too. Takes it out of your legs. It looks like some blood is now coming from Bornea. Perhaps hey! a cut, uh, maybe by his left eye. It looks like. But again, he, you know, he, he he's not he's not making any adjustment. If you watch, every time the referee gives him that, that space to break, he backs up directly to the ropes, and that's where he doesn't need to be yet. Because of stuff like that, he gets backed up, and then he is just a free throw to the body. Nice, nice, nice upper body movement from in way. Like he said, he's slipping, he's countering. And when he counters, he's throwing three, three, four punch combinations. Pornay is having flashes of success when in a way opens up and he's able to tag him to the body. But it's always, you know, in the middle of a combination that in a thrown before and after. So he's getting the best of it each and every time Pornay does choose to open up and throw. That's gotta be frustrating. Right now he's boxing from a side pole position, but he's still not finding much success. Oh. Feet got tangled up. Yeah, it's swelling. That swelling is definitely showing. Yeah, that left eye of Bornea here in round six. Get some work on that in the corner here with just about 15 seconds left. But still, quite a ways to go in this fight. Fortunately, and, and we're calling this fight from a monitor in a studio and don't have the same look we would ringside at where that cut is. And we'll probably look at that cut in the corner. But it's at least it's under the eye, which it appears to be not in the worst Sorry. spot. It's those cuts right on your eyelid, right above the oh, eye yeah. that yeah, I've, been, I've, been, I've been in a few times. I've been you know? stars as we speak, yes. <laughs> I think it, that one just missed the mark from really having full leverage on it. But that body shot, that left hook to the body, has always been there all night. Oh, and maybe the cut is above the eye. It's really hard I, to tell. I think it's two cuts. Nice, nice, nice right hand from from my, my guy, my guy, Bernaya. You know, with the few, with the few shots that he's been able to get off. You know, clearly. But like you said, he has, he has had his moments. It just haven't been enough. Round seven. Okay, he's coming back out in the pole position. Sapo stance. See how I laid out and let you have that one, right? Because I knew <laughs> I you were know. coming with. <laughs> That's called chemistry, Jamal. That's called knowing your partner. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Cause that's what, that's what we're watching. We're looking closely. Like, let's see what's gonna come out this round. Well, at this point, I don't really feel like it makes a difference. Yeah. This he just needs to fight. 
You gotta, but you gotta march. You gotta be smart. But march forward. That backpedaling hasn't got him, got him anywhere. But again, NOA has not slowed down from the opening, from the opening round. The right hand. And now a little bit here, at least in round seven, Borne is more of the aggressor in That's terms of backing up in a way a little bit more. Maybe not landing a ton of these shots, but, but for that first minute, he was the one marching forward. There's a nice straight right hand from in a way. Yeah, one thing about um, you gotta watch the feet of that. His feet, his feet's on the inside, and he's he's lining himself up for Inoue's right hand. So just like that, he has to watch. He has to watch where, where you know where his foot placement is at when he when he does um, switch stances from all the docks to Sapo. Because he's gonna be he's gonna be getting hit with that right hand all night. Yeah, especially he's, he's going the wrong direction as well. He is letting Inoue dominate that outside foot position. You know when you have that orthodox and southpaw fighter, most fighters want that outside foot position. Oh yeah. Inouye's coming straight through, stepping around to his left and landing that straight right hand without a problem when Borne is in this southpaw stance. Borne had him, he had him trapped, but he let him out. He let him out. Nice defense from Inouye. Smartly holding and defense. walking him back is in a way. Right here. Just getting out of distance and then returning fire. Like you said, he has not slowed down at all. If it's not the left hook, it's the straight right, right hand. hand. He just turned it over right there, too, that right hand. And there, their heads came together on those same cuts. And you can see Bornea reacting there as that clash of heads has definitely irritated that cut, or cuts, if you will. And the blood is all over Takuma Inoue. He needs to get down on that stool so they can get to working on that cut. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. takes a walk gingerly before sitting in the blue corner. Four, four punches in that instance. And that right hand found his mark in the end. Boom. Look, he gray, kind of grays off the gloves, but he's been finding his mark with that right hand. As well as that left hook to the body or head. No cold press at all? Just a towel and a water bottle? These are games some water. <laughs> Round eight, this one's scheduled for 10. Pretty dominant performance through the first seven rounds for the younger brother of Naoya Inoue, Takuma Inoue. He's 16 and one with three knockouts against the game, Jake Bonet, who has taken a lot of body shots in this fight, particularly with the left hook, a lot of straight right hands the last few rounds as he's adjusted from orthodox to southpaw back and forth, and Inouye has figured out both stances without a problem as he continues to work a high work rate, and then there's that signature hook to the body we saw early and often. It's target practice at this point. Right hands, left hooks to the body. Uh, you, could, you could clearly um, just tell from the um, Bernays' demeanor that he's more worried about the incoming than you know his own out, you know, than his own output at times. Oh, nice that's uppercut. that guy. He fell asleep. Started, yeah, nice uppercut, but it started with that left hook. And the referee is calling for time as they take a look at that cut or cuts that are just leaking from the left side of Borne's face. 
I mean, they haven't really given much attention or done much work no, on those all. cuts at all for their fighter. We're going to let this one continue here in the eighth round. A lot of time left, too. We're not even at the half halfway mark yet. Counter, counter left hook. What is Middle it like, one. Jamel? What goes through your mind when you're dealing with some bad cuts like that? Oh, I, I can tell you from experience. Yeah, that's when why I, I'm um, asking. When I, yeah, when I fought um, Shakur, I was thinking like, you know what? I can't, I can't sit here and box. I got to go out and fight because the longer I try to box, uh, you know, a technical boxer is not, and it's not going my way. The more I'm putting myself in at risk of the fight being stopped. So it was like you got to just, hey. Go for broke, do or die at this point. Does it change the way you position your hand placement, your defense? Are you cognizant of trying not to get? Oh yeah, I, I think I think yeah, I think uh, most time for the most part you are you will try to protect that cut for the most part, but at the same time it's like you, you um well you know smart fighters they, they try not to, not to worry about it so much and like listen I just gotta go for mine and go and go get it. So if anything it just makes you want to take it up a notch. Yeah, because um you you know for a fact your opponent they smell blood. He's like, okay, I know that they're they're coming. They're coming. Especially when they have a break in the action, the referee, you know, is concerned about the cut. That that you know that that gives your opponent some, you know, some height. And he's like, you know what, he wants he wants he's gonna try to finish you. So you gotta be on alert, you gotta be on a more alert at that point in time at that when it happens. Great insight from Former world champ, now retired fighter, right, Jamel? Retired <laughs> fighter and commentator. Christina Jamel wants Mary. me to stay right next to her, y'all. I'm just telling you right now. You on the mic and everything that you've done <laughs> in your career and serving our country and and all of that. And there is a, the best look we've had so far at the cut. And I think that they have seen enough oh, because of the cut. They are going to stop this fight as Bornea shows respect to Takuma in a way. But this fight is going to end here in the eighth round. What a great performance from oh, Takuma yeah. in a way. Like I said, don't don't get it twisted by the three knockouts, well, four stoppages oh, now. Just, you know, this, this guy fights with bad intentions, just like his brother. And I want to see more of him in the future. It's interesting um, because it's, I, you know, I've seen covering boxing all the years that I have so many different variations of cuts and ones that guys are allowed to fight continue. I'm like, how is he allowed to fight? And other ones where it's like, oh, he could have continued to yeah, yeah, yeah. round yeah. and a half. So, uh, depending on where you are and who the referee and who the doctors are, but... Nonetheless, it was just, despite a, a crazy knockout from Brea, it was just delaying the inevitable. In a way, with yeah, dominant absolutely. fighter had won every round of this fight and is your winner by TKO at the 245 mark of round eight to improve his professional record now to 17 and one and add another KO uh, to his record. So congratulations to Takuma Inoue, who